John Noe unveils Greater Than We Believe with your host, Stephen King. Welcome. This is Stephen King and my friend John Noe. We are presenting a series called Greater Than We Believe. We hope that you'll join us today and uh, take special interest in the subject at hand. In case you're new to us, this series has been going on for over two years now. And um, our hope is to point to our Savior Jesus Christ and help people to see how he is greater than we could ever have known or believed. Uh, we've got many topics we've talked about over the last couple years. Right now we're talking about people's view of the end times from uh, scripture and how uh, um, it can be very divisive. And we have uh, got a subset we're using this title, The Divine Solution. And the subtitle here is Unifying End Time Views. So with the end in view of not just winning arguments, but to, to, to unify our thought, uh, John has uh, put together a presentation that will be a synthesis of facts of the four major um, mm -hmm. end time views. And we're going to... Um, Take over today, leave it with John today. This is num video number 125, Dispensational Pre-Mill View. That's the first of the four that we're going to talk about more deeply. Mm. <coughs> Excuse me. So, John, this stuff confuses me and a lot of other people, so make it simple for us, okay? <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're going to start with the most popular view. Right. That, that means the one that most Christians hold. Okay. Primarily because they haven't been told otherwise. Right. Or they don't even know yes. that there's any other options here. Uh, I encountered this when I became a Christian for sure, and we shared that on our previous yes. video. And at that time, I didn't know there were other views either. So uh, it's the view you hear all the time. Mm -hmm. it's, it, and again, it places Christ's second coming in the very near future. Mm -hmm. Can happen tonight. Next week, mm -hmm. you know, uh, and it happens literally before his 100 or 1,000 year reign. So it's called the pre millennial, okay, pre mill view. And today, this view is held widely, but uh, by such well known proponents as Tim LaHaye mm -hmm. in his Left Behind series. Now, I will share this with you an update. Uh, Tim no longer subscribes to this view. <laughs> I wonder why. <laughs> and Hal Lindsey, mm -hmm. the late great planet Earth. Hal, hey, Hal, as far as I know, still subscribes to yeah. this view. Uh, it is also held by most evangelists, such as the late Billy Graham and Jack Van Impey and Paul Crouch, who no longer subscribe to that view. Yes. yes. Uh, and uh, John Hagee and Pat Robertson, who still subscribe yes. to that view. Now, do you want to tell our viewers who may not have grasped <laughs> the innuendo? Yeah, once in that now uh, understand that view to be wrong are those that have already passed. They're, uh, they're in glory now with our Lord, and they realize that they were preaching a false message. <laughs> <laughs> See, I didn't want to say They've that. They've changed but their minds. I let, you, I let you do my dirty yeah. work for me. Uh, another adherent of this, who I'd mentioned previously, was the disgraced radio evangelist Harold Camping, who uh, very famously once again predicted the end of the world for 1994, and then again in, when, it, when that failed in May of 2011. But the only thing that ended was his radio network's financial stability. <laughs> And uh, so, so he he misled the led the world twice, and this is the guy I appeared on Larry King Live. Yes, uh, back in 1993, in the middle of Waco, and guess who was right? Mm. Yeah, yeah, but someday you won't be. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Would you give me that elephant behind yes. there? Now, you made a comment. To tell our viewers what you made a comment in between them. I was just talking off the cuff, and I see an elephant here, and you only see half of its body. 
so you see the front paws and then it, it looks like it's sunk. And I said this to me, it, it, it speaks to me. It, it stands for the Republican Party sinking in the mire of the swamp. <laughs> for me, from a theological standpoint, yeah. this is the premillennial dispensational view. <laughs> That is doing the same yeah. thing, except it's still prominent. Yeah. So I'm going to put, where should I put it right here? So we can, That's fine. It'll work. So as we talk about this, I'm just going okay. to leave that visual image up there. Yeah. So is that all right? That's fine with me. You think so? Okay. Uh, and I'm getting ready to sneeze. No, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> the historical fact is this view has been the main, but not the only, Christian source of a sad trail of proclaimed and false predictions. Mm -hmm. Over the centuries, especially the last 50 to 80 years or so, these repeated proclamations or prophecies of the coming and the failures to take place have taken a huge toll on the credibility and the viability of the Christian faith. Christian, Charisma Magazine, for example, in 2013, which editorially holds to this view, mm -hmm. uh, lamented, quote, most young believers no longer uphold Bible prophecy and eschatology as key components of faith. Young believers do not care about our topics. They are somewhat offended <laughs> by them. So we're losing the young ones from yes. this view. I mean, it's sinking. Yes. It is, because it's got a long trail of, of, of prophecy and failure, prophecy and failure, prophecy and failure. They don't have any credibility. Yes. Except to hold that... That, that futuristic thing out there like a guillotine yes. blade, re poised, ready to drop and chop off our future. Yep. In the same article, former pastor and speaker Brian McLaren explained, he said, I think a lot of people, those my age along with younger people, have been turned off by wolf cry that wolf crying scenario. Yes. That means crying wolf and there's no wolf. Right. Okay. On the uh, aggressive side, and another of this uh, view's popular authors, John MacArthur, mm -hmm. in his um, uh, dispensational premillennial book, The Second Coming, for example, uh, categorically terms the premillennial anticipation of Christ's soon coming return as the hope of every true <laughs> believer. Therefore, I must not be a true, true believer. Welcome to my world. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, his terminology implies that those who do not hold to this view are not true believers, yeah. whatever that may mean. Yes. Well, it couldn't mean anything good, yeah. <laughs> at least in MacArthur's opinion. He further charges that those who abandon the hope of Christ's bodily return have, in effect, abandoned true Christianity. True. So you know where... That yeah. place is you and me. Yeah. Okay. Not Fighting good words. <laughs> but that view yeah. is sinking. Yes, it is. It's sinking. Right or wrong. It's, sink. it's got a long way to go to sink. Sure. Because it's still dominant. So the three, there's three varieties of this premillennial view. There's a dispensational premillennial or classic dispensational view, which is what MacArthur and Hal Lindsey and Tim LaHaye and, and those held to. And before that, there was the classic or historical pre-mail view. And now there is a progressive dispensational view. Mm. Now the progressive dispensational view, which we'll cover in our next video, is because even dispensationalists can agree with each other. Uh, I mean, there's a lot of infighting going on in this view. Yeah. Well, there is in other views too. Sure. But uh, there certainly is in the, in the dominant view. Uh, for our purposes, we will focus primarily on the dispensational premillennial variety, but we will address the other two. And I want I want to just caution you: that this is going to be somewhat tedious for you, uh, and, and because I, you, need, you need to see the complexity and the confusion. And and you know, hopefully, I can show you. So don't don't try to follow me. All right? Or you know, don't say don't sit there and get concerned about. Oh, I didn't quite follow what John was saying. Well, let's do it again. Maybe you would, but but don't worry about that because they're confused themselves. Yes, that's the problem. And and I want to demonstrate that to yes. you in in this and the next video especially. And then when we get into the post millennial uh, view, uh, you're gonna you're gonna hear a lot of good stuff mm. in that. I mean, a lot of good stuff. And when we get into the uh, predator view, you're gonna hear a lot of good stuff in that. Yeah. So stay tuned. But first, we got to go through these these first these. Yeah. next three videos here. All right. 
Dispensational premillennial, or also termed classic dispensationalism. Today, this is the dominant view. Uh, in conservative evangelical circles in America and elsewhere, even Playboy magazine recognizes that. <laughs> yeah, I'm I didn't I'm, go there for scripture, Ron. <laughs> I'm going. I couldn't put that in my dissertation. They Ooh, they would not yeah, allow me to. But I can do it here. Yeah, okay. Playboy magazine in 2000. No, I don't subscribe to it. No. <laughs> <laughs> there was a reference in a Christian magazine. Yeah, okay. To, you know, okay. That's how I got it, folks. Okay. okay. Playboy Magazine 2004 recognized, and notice I don't have one to show what show. No, it. yeah, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Even Playboy Magazine 2004 recognized the explosion of its popularity in a sidebar article entitled Apocalypse Now. Mm. 2004, well, it wasn't now. Yeah. Another one of those things that came with. Playboy acknowledged that, quote, this particular brand of Christian fundamentalism has invaded mainstream America. And it cited a Gallup poll uh, in which Playboy reported that 44% of Americans now believe in the pre mill version of the rapture. Mm. Wow. That's a lot, lot of money, a lot of people. Yeah. Yet historically speaking, most popular pre, the most popular pre mill variety is a fairly recent development in church history. Arguably, its origins go back to John Nelson Darby in 1830s, who seemed to be the first to have systematically articulated this view in a systematic way. Mm -hmm. Later, it was pop popularized by C.I. Schofield in the early 1900s in his Schofield Bible, which many people think is the only version of the Bible that you can hmm. trust. Uh, since then, this view has gained widespread acceptance within evangelical circles, but many find it confusing and overly complex. Stay tuned. Hmm. Uh, if you do, don't worry about it. But I want to give you a feel for it, so stay stay with me. Even premillennialists find it so, mm -hmm. as we will see next week in our next video, especially, and for reasons that will shortly become more and more evident. Okay, all premillennialists, however, are in agreement about two things. Mm -hmm. Number one, the fulfillment of all four chief eschatological moments lies in the future. Mm -hmm. And secondly, in contrast to both the all-mill and the post-mill views, they see the Lord's coming happening within history and not at the end of history, mm. i.e. end of time, but within. Therefore, Jesus' second coming slash return, not their rapture, but the second coming or return occurs after a seven year or perhaps three and a half year or some period of time called the Great Tribulation, after which the thousand year millennial, our millennium begins. And upon his second coming return, Christ will destroy hmm. the end time Antichrist, and who many dispensationalists believe is alive today. Hmm. Now, they've been saying that since 1830s, mm -hmm. you know. And this will happen at the Battle of Armageddon, after which Satan will be bound for a little or a thousand years. And those believers who die during this tribulation period will be resurrected at that time. And Christ will set up his earthly millennial kingdom on earth, headquartered in Jerusalem, mm -hmm. and reign for a literal 1,000 years over you and me. Mm -hmm. We will be subservient to them. We'll be their subjects. Mm -hmm. And they, they will reign with Christ in supremacy over everyone, even over us Gentiles. Mm. And at the end of that thousand years, a final rebellion of evil will take place. Isn't that ironic? Jesus comes here and reigns for a thousand years, and, and they still rebel against mm. him. Followed by God's final victory, resurrection of the wicked, and the beginning of the eternal state. Hmm. When God comes back and finally makes this world the way he should have made it in the first place, mm -hmm. because he screwed it up. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's what they, that's that's what they believe. What yeah. And while most premillennialists are in agreement that we moderns are living in the last days right now, in which the evils of this age are perennial, and the only hope is for rapture, removal from planet Earth, right. 
out of this evil life and into a realm of bodiless, of a bodiless scriptural heaven. And when I say bodiless scriptural heaven, that's because, because the resurrection hadn't happened yet <laughs> in, in their time frame. Yes. So we go to heaven, get moved out of here in the rapture, but we don't have bodies up there mm -hmm. because our bodies are still on planet Earth. Mm-hmm. Because the resurrection hadn't happened yet, whatever that means. Not all premillennialists are in agreement on, however, on all this. Uh, what, what, you know about the seven-year great tribulation and the rapture, and whether it comes during, before, after, or, or whatever. For instance, they argue over the timing of that, whether it's before, during, after. I said that, didn't I? Hence, they have developed subcategories called pre-trib, mid-trib, two-thirds trib, and post-trib. <laughs> For example, by far the largest group are the pre-tribbers, because they want out of here before all this yeah. stuff hits the fan. Right. Can't blame them for that. No, nope, right? no. And they are sure the rapture will occur very soon, since they believe everything is in place now. I mean, Israel is in the land. Mm -hmm. Everything's in place now, which is and Israel being the land is, ter is is termed their super sign. Yeah. And following this rapture, the seven-year period uh, will be ruled over by the Antichrist. And uh, in, tw in, two th uh, in 2012, the best-selling and most popular author of this view, the late Tim LaHaye, was quoted in Chris Charisma magazine regarding this current status of Israel as being the super sign. He said, and once again emphasize that the Jews were scattered to almost every country in the world for 1900 years but in the last 100 years they have been brought back to their homeland and the whole world's focus is on this super sign of them being back in their land rebuilding the temple and all that stuff that we prophetic teachers we me and him and his group have been talking about for 150 years and now it's gaining momentum. Hmm. Tim LaHaye said that in uh, 2012. Thus, pre-tribbers and mid-tribbers and two-thirds pre-wrath tribbers foresee two future returns or comings of Jesus. Number one, the secret one, the non-visible one that raptures some, all, or whatever, believers off the face of planet Earth. Hmm. And two, the every eye will see one public, which comes later. But they argue over not only when it will occur, but also how many believers will be taken out and how many will be left. Mm -hmm. So some subscribe to a partial rapture view, claiming it all depends upon how faithful believers have been. The more faithful ones get removed, don't have to go through this tribulation. The less faithful ones, which probably would, we would probably mm -hmm. fall in that category since mm -hmm. we don't agree with their view, right? right. So we're SOL. Yeah. Salvation out of luck. <laughs> post tribbers on the other hand, are expecting only one future coming of Jesus at the end of the tribulation period. So even they can't agree with themselves on this. Let's also note that pre-trib dispensational premillennials are expecting three future resurrections. Hmm. The first resurrection occurs prior to the Great Tribulation and involves a resurrection of all the righteous dead of history, along with those believers alive who will be raptured off the surface of planet Earth. The second resurrection at the beginning of the 1,000-year millennial period for all the righteous who died during the who died during the Great Tribulation, and the third resurrection at the end of the thousand years for all the wicked. <laughs> But here's a troublesome question to begin to contemplate about that. How many future resurrections was the Apostle Paul talking about mm. and expecting when he voiced this prophetic proclamation at his trial before Felix? Acts 24:15. And I have the same hope in God as these men that there will be a resurrection of both the righteous and the wicked. A. Hmm. Not many. Not several. Interestingly, the Greek words translated will be, literally, from the Greek, should be translated to be about to be. Hmm. Which shows a double intensification of newness back then right. at that time. Stay tuned for more on that later. Uh, but that, that translation is missed in most Bible translations. They just yeah. say will be. 
but to be about to be <laughs> is a lot more intensified than, well, there will be. Yeah. Below is a listing of some other embarrassing problems, brothers and sisters, to ponder, such as, uh, and before I proceed with this, let me say this. We agreed, remember we agreed? And this is what I told my group at Madison Bart before I got into this, this next section. Remember, mm -hmm. we all agreed mm -hmm. that our guideline was going to be sola scriptura. That's first. And, and when I bring some of this other stuff up that we agreed, that you, you're not going to hate me. <laughs> you got in love. In love. Right? Those are our two guidelines, right? Sola scriptura and in love. Okay, number one. What does the Bible say about a future seven-year or three-and-a-half-year period of tribulation? Nothing. <laughs> what does the Bible say? Or, or, how about the Antichrist making a seven- or three-and-a-half-year covenant with the Jews? Nothing. God withdrawing Jesus' kingdom because most of the Jews rejected him? Nothing. <laughs> the world getting worse and worse? Nothing. Jesus coming back and setting up his kingdom in Jerusalem and giving it back to the Jews? Not a word. A rebuilding of a third Jewish temple? No, never. Reinstitution of animal sacrifices? No. Obviously that the is, greatest heresy in the church today? That is such a slap on the face to Jesus. Yep. Sinking. Uh, what did Jesus say about the rapture idea of removal of believers or a group of believers from planet Earth? Uh, zero. <laughs> Actually, he prayed against it. That's true. He did. In his prayer for all, he prayed that we would not be removed. Right. Who do you think we ought to believe? I go for Jesus. Good choice. <laughs> <laughs> okay, he prayed against it. Yeah, John yep. seventeen twenty. Yep. Jesus says, prayer for all believers. We would not be removed in the world. And I believe that includes you. Yes. And me. Yes. Stephen, uh, okay, what do you do? so what do you do with that? Let's see. Notably, post trippers ask this same question and cite this same verse. Mm. So uh, let's especially know that Jesus does not place a time period on tribulation. When Jesus said, "In this world, you will face tribulation," right? No time period. No no, no limitations on that. No. Not, not there or elsewhere. Nine. And in, what, 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 what's the Bible say about an end time Antichrist or the Antichrist? He actually refers to Antichrist several times in plural. Exactly so. You'll search in vain yeah. to find any and or the Antichrist in the book of Revelation, for example, or in the Gospels, or in Paul or Peter's letters, or in the Old Testament. The only two places in the Bible you'll find Antichrist mentioned are First and Second John. But here John puts down the idea of a single future Antichrist. See First John 2.18, for example. And most likely the Jews had heard about this Antichrist in the religion of Zoroastrianism. Mm -hmm. uh, who was the, the god of, of, of good and evil. Hmm. You know, with a god of good and evil. Uh, but John emphatically states that there are now many Antichrists. Note the plural, as you mentioned, Stephen. And any such person is the Antichrist. See First John 2, 22 and 4, 2 through 3, and 2 John 7. Yes. Many Antichrist. Back then. Mm -hmm. Already and, and read the read the descriptions mm -hmm. of who of who who who, 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 is, who is that Antichrist. Yes. Please check that out. Again, let me give those again. First John 2, 22, 1 John 4. 2 through 3, and 2 John 7. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> okay. Uh, 10. So without a tribulation time frame being stated in Scripture, how do or can we know that the so-called rapture is pre, mid, or post anything? <laughs> huh? Complex. Contrived. Yes. Nevertheless, these above ten problems are the ten pillars of the most popular view. And there are more problems. Yes. 
But most of the proponents of this view are so deeply to committed to the above notions that they cannot imagine that they may be in error in any of this. Re Sinking in the mire. Realistically, however, it seems that once we begin building upon the silence of Scripture, mm -hmm. and Scripture is silent on this, yes. there is no limit to where we may end up. <laughs> is it any wonder, therefore, why many non-dispensational theologians consider dispensational premillennialism to not only be unscriptural, but also to be heretical? Mm -hmm. For example, Henry Wick... Vic Verkler, in his book Hermeneutics, Principles and Processes of Biblical Interpretation, records that classic dispensationalism has been called, quote, the most dangerous heresy currently to be found within Christian circles, end quote. And one of its chief dis distinctives is the dichotomy between Israel and the church, is it not? which produces two different peoples of God and two different plans of salvation and two different destinies. Mm -hmm. but this further produces a dichotomized hermeneutic forcing its interpreters to divide Scripture mm -hmm. into two different columns and two different time periods. One that applies to Israel and the other that applies to the church. Mm -hmm. Wow. So if you're not confused yet... <laughs> Stay tuned. <laughs> uh, and you're not alone, by yes. the way. E even dispensationalists themselves are confused. Yes. As we will see here in, in our next video uh, next week. Many, uh, they're, they're confused among themselves, for, and, and they're confused. They're looking for validating evidence to try to erase their confusion. But we need look no further than the two different varieties of premillennialism that we'll show in our next video that will, will shine the spotlight on some of this confusion. So stay tuned. <coughs> and if you thought this was complex, yeah. <laughs> wait till you see yeah. what progressive dispensationalists are saying. Yeah. And they're called progressive. Yeah. Progressives is supposed to be a nice advancing word, right? You would think. Stay tuned. Yeah. Thank you, John. Next week. Well, are you as confused as I am? <laughs> that's, uh, but that's, we need to see the problem before we can see the solution to the problem. And okay. so I'm, I'm glad we're going through this. Next week's title uh, is Classic and progressive pre-mill views. So if you can get through that with us, it actually starts to pick up a little bit from there. Hmm. And uh, then we take all four of them and we start doing some synthesizing. <laughs> Thank you, John, for your study and for your putting this seminar on and for helping us to see the problems that hmm. are generated. You know, sometimes just a simple question is all it takes. Somebody will say they believe so and so, and you just ask them one question, and they go, hmm. <laughs> mm, never thought of that. Yeah. I mean, like, it's, uh, the simple question about um, you were asking about uh, what scripture supports the supposed Antichrist that's spends a certain amount of time, and, and they know it's in there somewhere because everybody talks about it. But then when you bring they, up the... They think it's in Daniel. It's yeah, not in Daniel. No, not, they think not, it's in the book of Revelation. No, it's not no, in the book of Revelation. Yeah. And then when you mention those two scriptures and they actually look them up and read them and they realize that's the only place in the Bible where the term Antichrist is even used. And when you look at it in context and you realize that there were Antichrists, plural, already on the scene at the time of that people that were against many, the teachers of Christ. Yeah, many. They start realizing, well, my goodness, where did we come up with this big, huge, you know? So that's the kinds of things we're trying to expose here, folks. So... Anyway, I'm hoping that you're enjoying this, that you will come back and see us next week. Like I said, next week is classic and progressive pre mill views. And then after that, we just continue this discussion going forward. God bless you all. Please pray for our ministry, and we'll see you next week. Thank you, and good night. Okay. <laughs>